We are immensely grateful to Lord Hasbertine for giving us his time this evening. Um, before I introduce our distinguished speaker, and I'll do that briefly, but that's a difficult task, just a very brief reminder as to why we're actually here. Bromsgrove is a very different school to that many of you will remember, including, dare I say, Lord Hasbertine. It now comprises of, wait for it, 1,600 pupils, aged 2 to 18, 1,300 British, 300 are from another 40 different nations. It's one of the largest independent schools in Britain. It's the biggest employer in the constituency. Would you believe it? It's actually the biggest exporter in the constituency. Ofsted this year resulted not merely in an overall verdict of outstanding, but in every single subcategory bar one, boarding accommodation note, we also received an outstanding, the highest accolade a school can. The report was identical to Eaton's, and you don't have to buy any funny clothes at Bromsgrove, so there is a saying. <laughs> But the point of this is, the governors and I want access to Bromsgrove widened. Ultimately, I want Bromsgrove to be free. Money, or the lack of money, should never be a barrier to this school. I ask governors to support a foundation so that anybody who could benefit from a Bromsgrove education, anyone who can benefit from competition, from high standards, from flair, from internationally minded vision, unambiguous moral codes, anybody who wants any of that should have the opportunity. That's what the foundation is about. My only fear is that given the calibre of our speaker last year, so they welcome, and the calibre of our speaker this year, we may have peaked too early. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Hessel time. I'm not going to claim him for Bromsgrove. I have read his autobiography. Shrewsbury School, PPE at Pembroke, Oxford, Member of Parliament for Tavistock and Henley, respectively. There are many, many lacunae in this. When in opposition with the Departments of Transport, Environment, Industry, then President of the Board of Trade, Secretary of State for the Environment, Secretary of State for Defence, First Secretary of State, and of course, Deputy Prime Minister. I still wonder if I should put my A-level results on my CV, so that is some measure <laughs> that we have here. But there is more than that. The Founder, Executive Director, then Chairman, the mightily successful magazine publishing company Haymarket, and of course Lord Heseltine is a successful author in his own right. Sundry awards and honours that have come his way in the last 10 years or so. I confess this surprised me. Gold medalist at the Institute of Sheet Metal Engineering, Publicity Club of London Award, National Business Awards Lifetime Achievement, PPA Marcus Morris Award for Exceptional Work in the Magazine Industry, Honorary Fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects, Fellow of the 48 Club, in recognition of outstanding contribution in relations to China. Remember the many lacunae. The energy is still astounding. No surprise to see Lord Heseltine on Newsnight recently locking horns with Paxman and Ken Loach, of all people, on the subject of spending cuts, or to discover that he's now been tasked with leading the team that will allocate £1.4 billion in the Regional Growth Fund to new businesses. Lord Heseltine is not resting on his laurels. And talking of laurels, Tarzan is, of course, less likely to be swinging through the branches than talking to them in his internationally respected arboretum of over 3,000 trees and shrubs. And as for his standing among young people today, I asked one of my six formers, who interestingly is applying for PPE um, at Oxford, I said, tell me what you know about Lord Heseltine. To which you replied, hmm, my mum fancies him. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to finish this introduction on a very personal note. I hope this isn't self-indulgent, and I hope Lord Heseltine will understand why I do this. Um, I come from Liverpool, and I grew up in Liverpool in the 70s, and I was in the sixth form in the early 1980s. Um, I was in the sixth form when the Toxmouth riots took place. And the once second city of the empire, my home city of Liverpool, was architecturally magnificent but in every other respect, it was actually dying before my eyes. I cared passionately about it. Only Detroit, only Detroit in the Western world had a more spectacular or a comparable decline to Liverpool, whose population had halved since the Second World War, hence Michael Heseltine. As an incentive for regeneration, planning requirements were relaxed. Companies were offered urban development grants, exemption from rates for industrial and commercial properties. Millions of pounds poured in. The Merseyside Development Corporation, established by Lord Heseltine, spent more than £200 million. I just want to give one example of what that meant to me. 
I used to drive past the building every day called the Albert Dock. You may be derelict until 1981. Not just derelict, but worse than that, right in the heart of Liverpool and a symbol of everything the city had become. It was truly appalling, and appalling on a vast scale. Today, the Albert Dock is a major tourist attraction in this city. It is the most visited multi-use attraction in the United Kingdom outside of London. Five million people a year visit that derelict site. It's now part of Liverpool's UNESCO designated World Heritage Site. The docking complex, the workhouses, sorry, the warehouses, comprise the largest grade one listed buildings in Britain, including London. And Liverpool MP Peter Kilfoyle, as vocal a critic as you will ever find in the Labour Party, said this Heseltine showed you could actually do things. He deserves credit for that. And I tell you, coming from a Liverpool MP in the early 1980s, that is the highest accolade any Tory cabinet minister will ever receive. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lord Hesitant.